feels good i got a comfy new chair got a brand new got a brand new mic uh, the fellows left that for me before they went out of town got a package here and some editor notes as well as some fan comments uh editor notes are uh da -da -da, productivity da -da -da -da. Uh, we're behind on news stories but da -da -da. Yeah, yeah yeah okay cool so um i have a lot of snow Brunel videos to go over mr huff stuff has some great videos oh wow he's got an almighty tevin video written on here Oh, well, I'm looking forward to that. Praise be almighty. And uh, let's see here. Okay, so it should be good. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Hope you feel better. I uh, hope you feel better, GTG, man. That cough sound kind of scary. We all thought you had gout of the throat. <laughs> the DSP content will do that to you. Um, no, we're, I'm good, man. Thank you. I should have actually waited. Uh, funny story behind that. Tyrone actually saw that, uh, that video and was like, nah, I can't let my boy go through that so he sent panda out here to basically take care of me over the last couple days it was cool and whatnot it was cool and whatnot her cooking has certainly gotten a lot better not that it was terrible but it's got it's gotten a lot better you know it's no frozen mail order meals and stuff like that it's it's no chicken it wasn't turkey burgers you know what i'm saying over season night in night out I mean, she actually really made me some really great stuff a lot of soup though to be honest with you so shouts out to panda thank you panda Appreciate it, Tyron. I appreciate you coming through for a brother. So, uh, I'm feeling a lot better now, guys. I'm feeling a lot better. <laughs> All right, next thing is... Uh, let's see here. Hope you're feeling better. Hope you're feeling better. Okay, will you be going over the Wings of Redemption situation? Uh, yes. Uh, his post-surgery... His pre-surgery and his post-surgery. I'll give you guys a couple videos of each. And you'll see what I... Th and we'll see what you guys think. The main thing about Wings that I want to try to impress upon you is... He, in my own personal humble opinion, is the representation of what DSP could have been if DSP had stopped fighting. Or when he does stop fighting. To be honest. That's, if Phil wasn't as arrogant, if he wasn't such a sociopath, he could very well end up the way Wings of Redemption is. So, yes, we will definitely throw some of those in. I think you guys really should see it for some of you guys who are not familiar with him. And there's some great channels out there. Got what Sean Rinklin, you got Wing Tings, you got um, Lord of Wings. There's a bunch of great Wings of Redemption channels out there. So, but yes, we'll go over that. Um, let's see, bunch of requests for the low tier God video. Yes, I haven't seen it yet pers personally, but I will go over it and uh, we'll see what he has to say. I'm, inter I'm interested in hearing what his response is. And apparently DSP has a response to that, so we'll go over that also. I might make that just one long video. And uh, let's see. Just a bunch of... I got a bunch of videos to cover. All right. Well, since that's all taken care of, let's open up this package, shall we? And let's see. Well, actually, let me read the note. All right. To GTG Networking Productions. Hey, man. Hope you're feeling better. But you are behind. And I need you to step your shit up. I hope this helps. <laughs> Take care of yourself, man. Peace. All right. Well. Set my shit up. Jesus Christ, man. Like, okay. What we get? Oh, he didn't do that. Oh, he, he didn't do that. Ladies and gentlemen, SSP has provided us with this beautiful layout. And, and, and even went out of, out of her way to order me that DSP cup. And guess what I'll be drinking out of it? Not that gout water, but this pumpkin spice cappuccino. I appreciate it. I love Bubba Spice. <laughs> oh, boy. I can feel the love. I can feel the love. So, in turn, let's go ahead and give that love back. And let's go ahead and get into this. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News, the unreliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the newsroom. God damn, that feels good. We are here with Snow Purnell, DSP Gaming. Uh, better than the FGC. John left me because of detractors and would be good at commentating. 
We are also complimented by Mr. Huffstuffs over here in our corner here and more of DSP's failure in Mario Tennis. And uh, that video itself will be coming up eventually because Phil talks about him hating the game. Which is so funny because you got the game for free. What is it to hate? Anyway, let's go ahead and break some of this down and then we'll get to the video. So, better than the FGC? Nope, not at all. Not even close. So much so, in fact, that I've got an interesting story for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently recording this on July 18th, 2018. A couple of days ago, a popular uh, Smash player is on Twitter and there was this buzz going around where um, different Twitter uh, different Twitter accounts were losing subs left and right. It's a purge basically by Twitter to get rid of dead accounts or what people suspect to be bots. And a lot of big accounts got hit. <coughs> Excuse me. Some small accounts, you probably didn't notice anything. But bigger accounts, they got hit. And everybody had their their two cents to throw in on it. The, uh, the main person who was speaking, one of the main people who were speaking about it, was like, yeah, I just lost 20,000... Um, Lost 20,000 followers, but that's a good thing. Let's actually see where we actually line up at. Now, for this individual, he had over like 200,000 people like following him. So 20,000 isn't nothing. DSP lost some, uh, some followers too. Can't remember if it was like 10,000, 15,000. It might have been even as many as 20. Can't remember. But he ended up losing some bots there. There you go. Who, who knew that Twitter clout meant that much? And uh, some t different people from the FGC decided to chime in on this. One of them was Low Tier God. Now, as you guys know, July 8th, he came back off, or was it July 4th? It was either July 4th or July 8th, um, Low Tier God came off of suspension, so he's back on Twitch. So, I'm anxious to see how uh, he's dealing with the new TSO over there. Or T TOS, sorry. How he's dealing with the new TOS over there. But he decides to chime in and basically be like, well, you know... What does all this internet clout mean anyway when none of you got most sorry when most of you guys won't even be top players these aren't his exact words i'm just saying verbatim um most of you guys won't be top players either which way you know what i'm saying basically get money and a lot of a lot of people in the fgc responded to him i felt in a positive and respectful way saying that it's not all about money you know what i'm saying it's about the spirit of competition it's about the hunger and we'll delve into low tier gods uh mindset when we get to his video eventually because i'm sure he's gonna he puts everything out there and then dsp size to chime in because dsp is clout chasing from what i'm hearing according to twitter he's clout chasing so he sees that his buddy low tier god they're not buddies at least not that i know of, but uh he sees that low tier god is uh up there and he has something to say so since phil follows him and i think low tier god follows follows phil he decides to chime in and talk about, oh, well, back in my day, we didn't get paid either which way. It was about the love for the game. And uh, back when I was, I think he said when he was a pro player or when he was a really good player or whatever. And a couple of people came in, snapped on him. Uh, DSP does what he normally does and uh, goes into Dave mode and decides to spit his whole resume and then, you know, have an insult at the end of it. And uh, one of the slapbacks that I thought was absolutely hilarious was when... Uh, one of the individuals said, okay, good for you, but you were never great. <laughs> You're still never a great player. And DSP just left after that. Because why not? You can't really defend that. In any case, um, DSP is kind of looked at as just kind of a joke in the FGC. He's kind of a representation of what you shouldn't be. And holding on to past glory, if you will, is kind of pointless. And for some people... They think it's just a little bit pathetic. On to John and the detractors took <laughs> John took the detractors. Sorry, the detractors took John away from DSP. Well, that's a touching love story there. Um, we'll make of that when we get to that. And I would be good at commentating. So, I had put out a video. Actually, I didn't put out a video. We vaulted that video. Talking about an opportunity, an opportunity that DSP was presented back in his machinima days. This was right after Street Fighter 4 came out, Vanilla. And uh, Machinima was speaking, was talking to him in a, uh, in basically a business meeting about, uh, you know, some of the opportunities that could have been, that could have been had if he was willing to play ball a little bit. 
And DSP thought that the meeting was about his YouTube channel. And it was to an extent, but it was about, it was, it was really about other opportunities and what Phil would have been open to doing. And Dave being Dave completely got lost in the shuffle, did not understand anything that was said to him, did, couldn't read the room for shit and basically screwed it for himself. It's too bad I didn't put that video out. I might dig that out one day. To make a long story short, Machinima was looking at getting into uh, a type of commentating type situation where maybe they would host tournaments, maybe they would just send uh, some people from Machinima to tournaments, like an Evo, and do some play-by-play. -play. And I had said in that video that DSP, back in those days, might have been perfect for that. He could have done a, uh, he could have been the Jerry the King Lawler of Street Fighter 4. He's someone that He's, he's your proverbial bad guy. He is a former, he's a former player. I'm going to say that he's not a pro player, but he's a former player. So he has a little bit of insight and he's an asshole. So it's easy for people to hate him. And it makes the other commentator or the other two commentators, if they decide to go with a three man format or a three person format, it would make the other two look good while all the hate, all the hate kind of gets focused on, on Dave. And since Dave is the king of hate, it works. It works really, really well. And, but since Dave couldn't read the room and he couldn't understand what they were telling him, that he couldn't read what they were alluding to, it went completely over his head. That business degree really came through for him. Um, but not just that, his, he lacks social abilities too. He can't talk to people. It's, he, he has a lot of things, he has a lot of shortcomings, I should say. And that ended up screwing that opportunity for him. But uh, it could have been something. But I would assume that this came about because he found out what some of the commentators in the FGC make. They make okay money. They don't make StarCraft money. They don't make um, Dota money or League of Legends money, but they make pretty good money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm not counting like people like Yipes' pockets or you know James Chan or anything like that, but I'm sure they're doing all right. You know what I mean? Especially if you're good. So in any case, let's get into this video. Let's see what has to be said about this. And we will move off of that. Now, let's go ahead and put that up there for uh, posterity's sake. Oh, boy. Look at, look, at, look, at, look, at, look at how clean I am. That's like the before and after. I was clean before. I'm clean after. Oh, look at that shit. I look good, don't I? I look good, don't I? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is... This is DSP News, always late, never breaking, unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network and Productions. You guys all know the slogan. God damn, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It's time to watch me work. We can see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. I want to say thank you guys for making the, my Twitch stream chat an enjoyable place to be, a place that's fun, a place that we can hang out and feel safe and have a good, positive, non-drama experience on a daily basis. The reason I say this is because recently, a few big, high-profile Twitch streamers, much bigger than me, have been basically getting banned or suspended from Twitch. <gasps> oh my god, that's terrible. That's such a terrible thing. Because, number one, these guys regularly do stuff on stream as stunts to get attention. You know, they use words that you know you should not be saying on Twitch. They bring up ridiculous, controversial topics and dr stir up tons of drama in their stream chats, I mean... Quite frankly, let's be real here. The reason they do it is because... Yeah, let's be real for a minute. Phil does the exact same thing. It's just that he's he's such a small channel that he can kind of get away with it a little bit. Now, obviously, we all know about <clears throat> what led to his first suspension and the ban that he took on that. And since then, Phil has been a little bit... I, he's been a, a bit more mindful, I should say. But he's not a priority. And that's why they keep him around, I think. He's not a priority. He's a shield for some of the bigger streamers, mainly the, the thoughts, I think, if I had to be honest with you. He, he's, that's really what he's there for. You know what I'm saying? When you got people like uh, Destiny, who was one of the guys who ended up getting uh, suspended. He's suspended for like 30 days. Actually, interesting thing on that. I think he said that he was going to lose like 50K that month that he's going to be off, he's going to lose like $50,000. It's something like that. It's, it was something high. I was like, damn. And that's just off of 
Uh, did he say those were off just off Prime subs alone? So that's not even donations and whatnot. Just to give you guys an idea of what some of these bigger dudes make. It's somewhere around that ballpark. Um, that's scary money to lose in a month. Also, um, recently, uh, Shroud was suspended too. Um, I thought the reason why he was suspended, or he was suspended was stupid, but I think he's back on Twitch now. I think it was supposed to be like 30 days. I think he came back after a couple, after like maybe less than a week. So there you go on that. Still, I thought his reason for getting suspended was kind of stupid, but either way, it doesn't matter. He's back on. But that gives you guys an idea of what some of these big guys are doing and what kind of money they're making. And you know, like I said, off for Destiny, that was just off Prime subs. You know that you're, it was like, let's say it was between twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars just that month. That's not donations. That's not bids and all this this small money that DSP worries about. We're talking about just off the Prime subs. You know what I mean? Not even talking about donations. That's crazy. That's crazy. They need to get attention, you know? And that's sad. If you can't hold down a stream that's entertaining enough for the viewers that you have to constantly be doing dramatic things and bring up controversial topics and saying things you know you're not supposed to be saying just to draw up attention then there's something wrong with your streaming method. I mean, obviously people were not uh, interested in what you were doing, so you had to do these ridiculous things to get attention, right? That's like me, Bree, right? That's like me, Bree. Uh, and it's sad because there are people who do this all the time, but Twitch is now cracking down on that. Okay, they are. And so what I want to say to you guys, Thank you, because you know every day on pre-stream I go through the rules and I explain to you guys how I don't want drama, I don't want negativity, I don't want people coming in here saying ridiculous, controversial things. This is a gameplay stream for us to hang out and have fun and feel safe and have a community, right? Where we can come and feel like, wow, it's a place to chill today, right? That's what I want. I don't want it you come in here and you got people doing ridiculous things, saying racist... How much of a community is it if the whole point of the stream is supposed to be about him? <clears throat> Giving him money, supporting him mentally... And physically, and well, at least financially, M supporting him mentally, praising him at all times. That's the positivity aspect of it. You guys can't talk about anything else because if Dave isn't familiar with it, you can't speak on it. He let the football thing go by, or soccer, however you want to word it. It's really, I guess, it's European football. That's what I call it. He let that go. He let that slide because he. There's no reason why not to. But when people brought up other. Um, other YouTubers and what was going on with them. Hey guys, he actually gets on his phone in the middle of gameplay, in the middle of a YouTube video and whatnot, as well as his stream, and, and gets into the chat and say, hey guys, um, you see me here doing this. Uh, a little bit of attention over there would be, you know, would be good. Not that I mean to cut into your guys' conversation, but how about you guys focus on me for a second? How, how weak-minded of an individual are you that you can't even you, that you can't even allow a little bit of conversation about somebody else who isn't you. This is what it's come down to. And then he got so frustrated that he went on like a minute rant talking about it. That was also in a, an Almighty Tevin video. Are you serious? And yet he wants a, a fun, safe environment. It's supposed to. It's all fun and safe for him, not for anybody else. And more and more of his fan base sees this. That's why the subs keep dropping. Well, the subs are going to drop regardless. But that's why the subs keep dropping. That's why viewership is slowly but surely dwindling out. Well, supposedly. Supposedly, he made an uh, he had made an announcement maybe yesterday or on the 16th that, oh, his, that, uh, his Twitch channel is doing almost as well, is doing well enough that if he could have it going on consistently, he wouldn't need YouTube anymore. But he's not gonna stop YouTube. He's not gonna stop uploading videos, so what is he talking about then? And even if his viewership is up over there on Twitch, obviously financially it's still not coming through the way it's going to, that he needs it to. And it'll be a long time until it does. He has to change if he wants things around him to change. Anyway, just my opinion. Thank saying very insulting things to different people, drawing up controversial opinions and arguing with each other and basically making it a toxic place. I don't want that. I know you're lying. And I, you know, I use that negativity. I use that toxicity to fuel me, right? That was delicious. And you don't want that. I know that. I know that we want this to be a fun place. And you guys have made it like that, okay? You guys have made it like that. 
um, because you've basically agreed with the things that the sentiments that I've related that I'm making this a chill place for gameplay first. You know, and not to say that that all conversation is banned. It's not. If you guys want to have serious conversation, you can. But understand, it's a place that primarily it's a place to chill and hang out and have fun and not have drama and constant shit and negativity and toxicity. So you're telling me that just because they're having a conversation about something that isn't you, that's going to bring up controversy and drama? No, it's just something that you don't want to see. If it isn't, Dave is great. You can do it, Dave. We love you, Dave. All of a sudden, you get butt hurt. And he tries to let a little bit of it go, but he can't. He really can't. It's just like the YouTube comments, right? Oh, I don't care about YouTube comments. They're no big deal. And then a couple of weeks later, he goes ahead and gets rid of them. Now, this is a while ago. But if they're not a big deal, and if you don't even look at them, then why'd you get rid of them? Oh, uh, I don't want the detractors to have any ammo. Oh, okay, so we so they just go to your Twitch then and get it from there. Then what? How, how did that fix anything? The YouTube comments would have been way more amusing, but then what? And you still screwed yourself on engagement. So you keep crying about, oh, YouTube screwed up their business. YouTube did this, that, and a third, and it, and it messed everything up. A lot of what happened to his channel was on him. Okay, not everything, but the majority of it was on him. And him taking comments away screwed his engagement. Pure and simple. He can sit there. What he likes to do is compare himself to this other alleged person who's a Muppet. Phil's words, not mine. PewDiePie, when he disabled comments back then, I don't know if he still has it disabled now, I don't watch PewDiePie, but in any case, um, he's he's equating to that. Oh, well, PewDiePie can do it, so why can't I? Oh, because PewDiePie gets millions and millions of views. You're barely breaking a thousand. I think that's a pretty big difference. Hashtag, just saying. Um... You know, it's funny because I think for a long time, Twitch seemed to be the Wild West. It was the place where you could do whatever the hell you want and get away with it. Well, if you tried to do crap like that uh, you know, in other places, you'd get in trouble. Well, now Twitch finally is cracking down on this stuff, and even big-time streamers are getting in trouble for it. So I do want to say thank you guys for that. Thank you for being positive and being awesome in the stream chat. Um, every day I feel like I can come hang out with you guys and have fun and not have to worry about, oh no, what's the next stupid thing that's going to happen on stream? I don't, I don't worry about that. Because we've had a great time, you know? Because the bottom line is Twitch is a bad business. Twitch is not a good place to put out quality content. It's not. You are constantly uh, nagged to advertise and or uh, push subs or product so that you can make money. And you're, they'll make money. They get profit from that. And then you get profit from that. They don't care about actual games. They don't care about what you put on your stream as long as this is coming into them. Twitch is all about subscriptions, subscriptions, subscri you gotta subscribe, subscribe, get your, get those custom emotes and shit, subscribe, subscribe. That's why everyone over there is all about their subs, subs, subs. Why would I go back to Twitch? Where Twitch TV is literally a business model. Based off of begging. I'm not the kind of person that's gonna sit here and say, Please buy this shirt. Please subscribe. Please do this. Please sub. Please thumbs up the video. Please see my other channels. Please. When do you ever hear me talking like that in a video? Well, let's see. So, and that's one. Of, and you just saw it right there. <laughs> Yet again, the the genius, which is Snorpin L. You're seeing why Phil fails. You're seeing it right then and there. The very things that he bashed other people for, or what he thought the business model was and whatnot, is his business model now. And people have evolved from that. So he's that far behind the eight ball that he's complaining about shit that happened years ago. You know what I mean? And then he ad adopted those same methods, those same tactics, if you will. Well, everybody else has evolved from that. See, while he was bitching and complaining about, you have to show this, you have to show that, you have to show this, you have to show that, everybody else was just building an audience. Everybody else was just building a fan base. Everybody was just trying to be known. Okay? That's what was really being done around Phil's time, back in the day, during Phil's time. But he didn't want to see that. He wanted to see the money. So now, he needs the money, and he's wondering why he's still not getting the massive growth that other streamers um, get, even though he doesn't watch any other streamers. You know, but he knows what they're, he knows what they're making, even though he doesn't watch them. So that's just a minor detail. Don't worry about that. Snort. And so he's he's following a, an, an outdated business model. And he doesn't know how to do anything else. 
he can't evolve. You know what I'm saying? Yet again, as I said some videos back, he's constantly devolving. And it's because he can't see, he only wants to see what's in front of him. He doesn't want to put any effort in, and it has to stay easy. It has to stay easy. And he's, and he's willing to limp along instead of actually fixing the leg. Because if he fixes the leg, then he has to actually put some work in. And he doesn't want to do that. He would rather just live off of your sympathy until, there's no, until there isn't any of you left. And then you'll see him start to actually move on to what other people are doing. Having automatic prompts for subs, for example, or when cheers come up and whatnot, where stuff are set on screen automatically so he doesn't have to worry about it, to having a sub count reader that will automatically, you know, update the subs, who is the highest sub, uh, or sorry, not who, how consistently your subs are, how high your, uh, who's the highest cheer, your top 10, if you will, this, that, and the third. All that is automatic now. It's automated. All that can be is done by a program, but Phil won't do it. Phil won't take, I don't know, an hour, maybe two, to set all of that up. That's the reason why, like, some of the uh, the perks for constantly subbing to his account. Almighty Tevin talks about that a lot. You get these shitty little crowns and shit, and that's it. You could have something way more elaborate. You could have something come up on the screen saying, hey, thank you for 13 months, or this, or this that, and a third. A lot of these people don't care about it, and they let their subs uh, lapse because there's nothing to really... Uh, for one, there's nothing to remind them, but there's no real incentive. You hear people all the time on a, on a stream saying, oh, thank you for 17 months, but there's nothing on screen. There's nothing there to, to give you the visual of, hey, man, thank you for that. You go to other, subscri uh, other uh, Twitch streamers, though, and no matter whether it's the first month or it's your 20th month, there's something different. So each one of the, the flashes on screen are individualized for how many months um, that you've actually subbed to them. But Phil won't put the effort in. What are you going to do? Basically, if you're a racist, uh, bigoted asshole who constantly says insulting things on the stream to get a rise, or if you're a no-content, no-life, no-worth titty streamer whose only value in life is showing off your body... For money, basically, you're a whore. Uh, oh no, you can't make a living on Twitter, Twitch anymore. Oh, shucks. You know, I love Twitch. You know, Twitch is huge to me. Twitch is the reason why I'm still doing this for a living. It's my main source of income. It's my livelihood, right? It is, very much. You know, Twitch is what I do on a daily basis. So far, zero. Zilch. Never have I ever gotten in trouble for anything on Twitch. Twitch does not, you know, think that anything I've done has ever been in violation of their rules. Twitch is the future. Twitch loves me. Even though he's been suspended twice. And my streams, negative, toxic behavior on Twitch. And Twitch, Twitch wants to help. And all of a sudden, a message pops up and appears in my stream chat. You have, you, this account has been suspended from Twitch. I slip up and I screw up again. And now I get banned from Twitch permanently and you know I cried it was real emotional it's very very emotional now my throat is starting to close up wow that's one of the very few times I've ever actually gotten really really genuinely emotional oh uh, Twitch is now gone I got the chair <laughs> all right so thank you guys for that just wanted to share that that positive sentiment with you because it really is a very positive thing and uh you know definitely I should give you guys credit where credit is due when, uh, you know, good things are going on. And in that regard, I definitely feel like streaming has been going great. Hold on a second. I got to get rid of a troll. There he is. He's gone. Someone else took care of it for me. Thank you. Why am I toxic? More toxic. More toxic. All right. The lolly cop. Just cheered. He said, Phil, you're going to love this story about the fighting game community. One guy who's good at Dragon Ball Fighters fought against a guy who's a pro. The guy who was good had legit complaints about the game. Everyone called him the DSP of Dragon Ball. Yeah, I know. Isn't it funny? How now, in the fighting game community, if anyone actually has any kind of legit criticisms for a game, they're now called the DSP. Because <laughs> here it is. Here's the truth. All right. Unlike most of the people who are fighting game community players, all right, I'm not a part of their very, and I hate to say it, very inclusive community. They are a very inclusive community, almost to the point where they can become like a cult sometimes oh you must love all fighting games oh you must kiss the butt of every high profile fighting game and get hype on every stream and how dare you actually have legit criticisms against something that everyone says is a great game and is hype 
and I see this all the time at games like Street Fighter Five. Fuck you. All right, so sorry, that was completely unprofessional. Um, yeah, screw that. Um, that's not true at all. Some of the top players in any one in any game, to be honest with you, excuse me, uh, respectfully, Street Fighter Four, Dragon Ball, uh, Guilty Gear, name, pick your poison. Even the top, even the top players have their problems. <clears throat> or have their problems with the game. Smash, you name it, they have it. And whatnot. They keep playing it because they love the game. But they all have their criticisms of, uh, criticisms of it. They all, has, you know, have their, their problems with it. No one's out there kissing anybody's butt as it pertains to games. It's, it's not the case. Especially people who play multiple games. And whatnot. They all have their problems and issues with it. And they're all pretty vocal about it. To be honest. You know what I'm saying? Phil doesn't watch interviews. Phil doesn't watch tournaments. He's told you guys that. So I don't I don't know why he's trying to act like now he, he's on the pulse of the fighting game community. But every every player, top player or not, has their issues with the games that they play. You keep playing it because you love the game. And if you're lucky, the uh, publisher will actually correct some of the mistakes and whatnot. But they all have their complaints. They all have their issues. Jesus Christ, Phil. Which are not very good, all right? Get the most hype, get the most views, get the most popularity, and God forbid you say something negative about it, that means that you're a troll or whatever, right? Now, for me, the reason that they, it's easy for them to say, oh, you're the DSP of, of, of this game, is because I'm not a part of their inclusive community, okay? I'm not. I'm not a part of their inclusive community. So, for me, I can easily play these games, which I do. As you guys know, I cover all fighting games. I just don't play them as in-depth as a lot of these guys. And I can legitly criticize them being someone who's played fighting games since 1991. I have a lot of hands-on experience with fighting games, alright? Uh, I myself am a former pro fighting game player. And I have legit criticisms of a lot of games. But it's funny, because a lot of people at first will immediately have a backlash against me, but then later on start agreeing with me. I mean, the perfect example of that is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. This was a game to at launch. I said, man, this game is not very viable as a competitive game. Um, it, it has a lot of problems. And within, you know, six months, the game's dead. No one plays it anymore. But at launch, everyone gave me shit for calling out these criticisms. And then next thing you know, people agree with me, okay? And this happens with every fighting game now. It really does. Like, if no one I agreed with you. It wasn't that. There were people that were... There were people in the FCC who said that from the hot... From the, from the beginning. So since when did so since when did DSP Darkside Phil say oh the game is shit and he was the only one who held that narrative? There were plenty of people who said that. There were plenty of people who said that. There were plenty of people. Dragon Ball, for example, he had his complaints with that. <clears throat> there were people in my comment section who were agreeing with you saying oh well you know Dave is kind of right the connections are bad. I didn't have a problem with the connections. You know what I mean? So I can only speak on I can only speak from myself and what my friends go through. Excuse me, I can't, I can't speak for his business class internet over there in Seattle. I mean, it sounds like his money's being wasted. That's what it sounds like. I'm sorry that either his internet connection isn't good or his general connection in general is terrible. <coughs> maybe if he took better care of his shit, maybe it'd be all right. Maybe if he wasn't running his PS4 on all damn night because he's too scared to turn the damn thing off. Maybe things would work better for him. I couldn't tell you. So whether it is a connection or a hardware and software problem, that's on Phil. But who the hell is he to say that he was the only one who was saying that and no one else? And then six months later when shit went when shit went south, oh, then all of a sudden everybody started to agree. You know what? Dark Side Phil was right. Dark Side Phil said six months ago this game was shit. And now I, I agree with him. Like he was the only one who said that. Shut the... Mm. Oh boy, you gotta you gotta you gotta love that whole me re type opinion about yourself. That's Dave logic for you, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. Dear, how dare I? Because I'm not part of the inclusive fighting game community, and I don't go to tournaments, right? And I don't. And anybody can be part of the FGC. You don't have to necessarily go to tournaments. You could go on the forums. You there's other ways that you can participate in the community. Not everybody's gonna come in and just shit on you like, oh, who the fuck is you? The th reason why people shit on DSP is because back in the day, he was an ass clown. And he was constantly being a piece of shit. And when he got pressed, he broke. He never stood behind not one damn thing that he needed to, that he said when he was online behind his keyboard, well protected. When he got pressed in real life though, then all of a sudden there was problems. Then all of a sudden, his friends had to step in and be like, hey man, he was just talking shit, man. It's not even that serious. And cooler heads had to prevail while Phil sat in the corner. 
praying to God that with his little Punisher jacket on that he wasn't get his ass handed to him. That's what the case was. The butt of top streamers and top players and kiss the butt of, of these game companies who make fighters. How dare I ever say something critical about a fighting game? So, to me, it sounds like the way, this is the way for them to dismiss valid criticism. Oh, you're the DSP of whatever. Well, fine, you do that. You make me your stigma, your stereotype, and you continue to pull the wool over your eyes and everyone else's eyes and play bad games. I don't know what else to tell you. you no, know, I'm not a person who is at the slavery. It really is. It's like you're, you're a slave. Of the new release fighting game. You have to, even if the game's not good, you have to play it and constantly stream it and talk about it because this is what brings in views and money for you because you're a part of the fighting game community. That's all you do. Well, that's the pigeonhole you put yourself in. That was What about you? You sit there and have to play brand new games too. We'll go, I'll go ahead and just, we'll remove the FGC aspect of it. All you do is play new games and you depend on new games to get money so you can live. So you can earn money to live. And when, and so when those, and when uh, these game writers come out and say, you know what? This game just came out two days ago. It's not very good. Then you're on pre-stream bitching about it. About like, oh, they should give it a chance. This, that, and the third. Well, doesn't that person not have some valid criticism? Oh, no. You want to wait until the week is out. So you could have, oh, I don't know, 50 parts of that video out where you're not really affected first. Oh, you're mad because the bigger guys who have already had the game for X amount of time go ahead and put the full the put the full game out on YouTube and then already have their reviews when he's like at part 20 of his playthrough and they're like, you know what? The game has a lot of problems. It's not very good. Oh, well, who, well, who said that people like you should have advanced copies? You guys don't deserve advanced copies or review copies or whatnot. Everybody should buy it all at day one and we should all be on a steady playing field. But was that not a valid criticism on their part? And then Dark Side Phil has to go off and be an ass hat and jump on fucking Twitter like some mental midget monkey and go ahead and start talking shit about other fucking people that had criticisms that had concerns oh because it hurt his bottom line oh i see so now you want to use the fgc as a blanket essentially to be like these guys hate me because i have a valid criticism about their games and and, and that's why they want to attack me and whatnot and that's why they use me as as a crutch essentially for valid criticism but when Phil does it, oh, why are all you guys getting mad at me? Why are you guys attacking me? It's just my opinion. I can't have an opinion. I can't say what I want to say. So which one is it? When someone else does it, jokingly, obviously, because you are a joke, Phil, but jokingly, oh, the, the, they don't believe in actual criticism. But when you get up, up on Twitter at 3 o'clock in the morning, drunk off gin, and go and spill your complaints... I don't understand why everybody's attacking me. Why is it such a big deal? Oh, I thought my tweets only go to my followers. I don't, eh, what about that? All right, just saying. DSP News. Your active choice, and that's your fault. So now you're mad because someone like me doesn't have to do that. I can play Simpsons Hit and Run. I can play a wide variety of games, and every once in a while I can go back to fighters and still enjoy them and not have to kiss the game's butt and play it constantly, even if I don't like it. Well, that's because I made a very good- brought up Simpsons Hit and Run because he actually has really good views on that. Some of the other, look at some of the playthroughs before that and after. The views aren't there. So that's why he brought up Simpsons Hit and Run. ...different decision than you. So maybe you should stop it with your sour grapes and just calling me insulting terms and instead look in the mirror and realize you're the one who did this to yourself and maybe if you were just honest with yourself instead of kissing fighting games butt all the time, you wouldn't be so miserable. <laughs> there you go. Do you want to play the fucking game? You got people who just cannot stay out of the drama. All right, and this is real talk. There's people who just can't stay out of the fucking drama. By the way, I just want to say something. I just banned someone from stream chat, and you may be wondering why. The reason I banned it is because the, the name this person is using is the name of an infamous Nazi. I'm Hitler. That's right. This is the United States of Phil. I am the supreme being. I make the rules, and what I say goes. Uh, this is not a place for you to stand on your soapbox and complain about censorship and freedom of speech. Because the bottom line is you don't have freedom of speech. This is my land. <laughs> he was the guy that got caught masturbating in front of children. It's the so guy <laughs> watching his Twitch. Is that really him? Is he the yes. one that got caught? Ma yes. Really? The guy is a feminine side. And this was brought to my attention by someone who apparently knew a little bit about history. And said, Phil, you're aware that someone's been cheering in your stream chat. is using the name of a really nasty Nazi who was one of the worst people ever. And I was like, no, of course I didn't know that. So, uh, now I know, and that person is now permanently banned. You can't do that kind of stuff. Alright, you just can't. So, there you go. That's why I just banned someone, and if people are questioning why did people, that guy get banned, that's why. 
I'm just going to ban. Shout out to Yolo Dopper. Here's the funny part. That's kind of similar to his pre-streams now, right? Where now when he does a pre-stream, okay guys, this right here was the pre-stream and this is the shout out portion. Uh, this is the interactive, I'm sorry. This is the interactive portion of it, which is pathetic all in itself. If you don't have, if you don't have any gameplay in front of you, it's still pre-stream, period. Okay, you can't break it up into segments to try to make it sound like, oh, well, this is where the announcements were, and now we're doing shoutouts. At the end of the day, it's still all pre-stream. Period. Something, just something to think about, uh, Dave. As it pertains to the whole situation with chat, Twitch can obviously slap the shit out of you if they catch shit in your chat being uh, um, that's being said that's obviously inappropriate. <laughs> Him saying that publicly and then having to justify why he does it is cause and effect. He has spent all that time shitting on individuals, banning people for no reason, and if you questioned it, you got banned too. Now, he doesn't want to do that because viewership is dropping, because subs are dropping. So now, he has to explain to you why he has to ban certain people, or why certain people are being banned. Because he had done it so frequently, and whatnot, without any real justification, and just shitted on everybody who even questioned it, that now he's backed up in a corner where now he has to try to explain himself. Same thing with the pre-streams, which is, yet again, just stupid at best. So, good job there, Dave. Good job. Who cheers? And Phil, I know you don't like to work on the 4th, but thanks for all the hard work keeping us entertained even on holidays. Big salutes to you, sir. Listen, it's not so hard. You really, you, you don't have to give me so much credit. Oh my god! Oh my god! What was that? <laughs> Oh my god! What the fuck? Whoa! Whoa! This shocks me. Because I love my job, you know? It'd be one thing if I hated my job and I have to come to work and grind it out. I like doing this. I like hanging out with you guys. I like playing games and having fun. And even when I'm playing a more difficult game that's- Think about this for just a second, ladies and gentlemen. Wouldn't you get tired of talking about yourself day in, day out? Like, think about that. If you really think about what Phil wants, his streams have to constantly be about him, day in, day out. When he talks, he has to talk about himself day in, day out. About his past experiences, about things that are happening to him, about what he thinks. It's all about him. So, where do you even find time for video games? For the gameplay itself. Which is the reason why he was get he's getting shitted on over this pre-stream situation. Because it's just more self-jaculation on his part, and people are tired of it. People just want to get into the gameplay. Not because he's entertaining, you know what I mean? Not because he's bringing anything to the gameplay itself. It's because it's a reprieve from him talking more about himself. That's how desperate the pig cult has become. Isn't that amazing? TSP News. Challenging and, you know, I rage a bit. I still enjoy myself, alright? So... What I should really say uh, is thank you guys. For the money, dummies. Because that's exactly what you fucking are. A bunch of fucking empty-headed idiots who paid me money to get absolutely nothing out of it. Thanks. <laughs> wow. I love my job anyway, you know, on top of that. So it's like, it's kind of a, 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 a trade, right? Hardy Buck cheered. And he says, it's the 4th of July, the day of forgiving, give John Rambo a call. What I like is that you still think that it has something to do with me. <laughs> I was the one who was always contacting- Alright, let's get into this crybaby shit. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing. Call John. Be like, hey man, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I fucked up. I screwed up immensely. I'm sorry that I didn't value you. I'm sorry I didn't value our friendship. And all I wanted to do was profit off of you. My apologies. I, if you don't even talk to me after this moment, cool. I just want to call and say that I'm sorry that I couldn't be the bigger man and try to at least fight for our friendship. And that all I cared about was you provide, helping me provide with content. That's it. That's all he has to do with John, Howard, OJ, and some of those guys. <clears throat> you guys don't have, I don't want you guys to have to participate in my content. You don't have to, I don't want you to do any of that. This is about our friendship, not about business. And the thing is about Phil, is Phil couldn't separate the two. He looked at his friends as he looks at Cat now, as an accessory, as something, that, as a prop, or as a prop, yeah, as a prop to help further him along.
from a business standpoint. Hence the reason why you're seeing, you're seeing these uh, IRL streams with Kat. Viewership's down and she needs to step up. If your friendship meant anything to you, you would do that. But Dave won't because, well, because Dave is Dave and he has excuses. Rambo, I was the one who was ignored. It wasn't like, oh, he was trying to talk to me and I was being a jerk about it. He was the one who ignored me. Yet people still act like it's the opposite. That's just fucked in the head, dude. That's not normal mental behavior. You know, back in high school, I was on a cocktail of medications. I mean, real talk, when I was in high school at one point, I was to the point where I, I was losing it. I wanted to either go do something drastic or, you know, go nuts. There was a girl who I was like obsessed with for a while. I need to reach out to him. That's what I was- <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, we'll address that later on. But it makes you wonder <coughs> with all that, that you, you know, with all that you just heard, excuse me, John and Howard and a lot of these guys must have put up with a lot. They must have dealt with a lot. He, they obviously saw Phil at his lowest point or as well at some of his lowest points, I should say. And you can't even call these guys and give them an apology. You can't even reach out to these guys and be like, you know, hey man, can we can we just have a have a conversation and not put that out, Phil? No text messages, no no audio, just something between you guys that can't be uh, profited from later, and just try to work out the differences. Even if you guys choose to never be friends again, at least get that worked out. Because guess what, you don't need to have enemies just after you day in day out. Or if if at least in this situation, you could have two or three less enemies, to be honest. I don't know. A wiser man would just, would, would swallow his pride and just call. Then again, a wiser man wouldn't be prideful about that situation and just admit that he's wrong. Whatever. <laughs> That's literally what I was doing. I was reaching out to him and being ignored. Why would I reach out to him again? The ball has always been in his court. Always. And he just freaking acts like it's on me. I was always the one who reached out and did everything. And I was the one who was ignored and mistreated. Yet I'm the villain somehow. So whatever. I, I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. You think I'm the villain? Go fuck yourself. That was my depression. Now, was it DSP lore that Dave moves, right? <clears throat> Dave moves. He gets himself settled in over there with Panda. And then, uh, and then he calls uh, John and is like, hey... Do you want to pick up, you know, with uh, either smart guys or do you want to pick up with some other type of content and moving forward? And John, who had real life shit to worry about, was like, well, hey, man, I'm trying to get myself in order. You know, when I get an opportunity, I'll do something. But until then, I got real stuff that I need to try to get up out the way. And Dave's like, oh, OK. And then Dave calls him the next week. Hey, man, are you ready to go ahead and get these videos done? And why not? You ready to get this content done? Because people in Phil's fan base were like, well, hey, man, we, where's John at, man? We really miss John. You know, when will John come back on? And Phil's viewers and Phil's views were already dropping. So what does he, Phil do? He goes to his resources, not his friends, not people who have looked out for you and had your back. He went to his resources. Sounds to me like Phil did it to himself. And then when things didn't go his way, then he puts out text messages. And whatnot. And then the video comes out, uh, you know, with John and Howard talking, telling their side of the story after they've been after they have been attacked. And then all of a sudden, Dave's like, "I don't understand why everybody wants to betray me. I don't get it. I didn't do anything." And whatnot. At the end of the day, this was all Phil's doing. Your friends are supposed to be your friends, not objects. You know. And it's years now we haven't talked. And, you know, the, the way that I feel, and I've told you guys this before, I honestly feel the truth of the situation is that, you know, when John was involved in my content, he was a great guy. He was always ready to contribute. He drove out a lot. You know, he drove a long way to get out here to do, or to, I say out here, to get out to Connecticut to do co-op with me every week. And he was a great friend. And so... The bullshit began. But what I really feel is that when I moved, 
he saw it as kind of a betrayal because he thought that this was something that we had built together and the fact that I was moving across the country for my own personal benefit was kind of like a betrayal to him. And in addition to that, I think that he felt that at that point... What? Okay, first things first. I don't know about you, but you know what I'm saying? We've all had friends. Uh, we'll just ex Dave out of this conversation for just a second. People have friends who move all the time. Whether you're moving because of work, because you're moving just for general opportunities in general, maybe you're just tired of the city or state that you live in. How is that a betrayal? You're doing what's best for you. And your friends, your real friends, will support you on that. I've never heard anybody say, oh man, I, you know, I, I, I miss dude, man, but you know, he bounced on us and, and he betrayed us by moving. Who says stupid shit like that? That's retarded. That's absolutely retarded saying something stupid like that. He felt it was a betrayal because this was something we built. What? He contributed to your content because you asked him to. Because you weren't talented enough on your own to produce great content and people like John. If anything, John really, really helped him out with his content back in those days. John carried him. And Phil knows it. John carried him. Because it's funny when you see the, the John and Dave co-op and then you see like the John and Panda co-op or sorry and you see the Dave and Panda co-op it's completely different like he seems more annoyed with Panda where with John he's just having a great time and maybe that's because of the disrespect that he has for Panda but that's a whole nother con conversation for a whole nother day um, you can go into uh, Almighty Tevin's archives and see that there's plenty of great videos on that one but he helped this. I don't, he never looked at DSP gaming as, oh, I have a piece of this. No, he helped you. He was helping you out. And then when that shit started to become strenuous, when uh, John had to take time off from work, when John had to take, what was it? Like a three hour round trip to get to you. He asked you if you could break him off a couple of bucks, you know, for his trouble, essentially, because it wasn't like you guys had a contract. It wasn't like he, you were you were breaking him off, you know what I'm saying, a piece of the content you were putting up on YouTube. You were the one that was profiting from that. So what do you mean what you guys built? If that was the case, then where was his pieces of the profit? Because what you did eventually give him, because he asked for it, you know what I mean? Because he was taking time off from work. He's taking time off from his finances to get this shit done for you. It wasn't benefiting him. So, wh wh where was his piece of this that he supposedly built with each other? And then he got so upset because you left. I'm, it's amazing how he keeps spinning this narrative. And it's only because, and as you know, um, Snorpinel saying it on screen, it's only because his old fan base just keeps cycling out. So all these new people come in, don't know about all the lore. So he can spin the narrative. At least that's what I'm thinking he's doing. I'm thinking he's spinning that narrative for just that, for just that reason. I can't prove it, but that's my thoughts. Jesus Christ, Dave. The amount of stress that he had to deal with. Because what you guys got to remember, I've talked about this before. All right, um, is that there was a tremendous amount of pressure on him because he got a lot of the flack and the attention, but also the negativity that I got. False. Wrong. Incorrect. Negative. No, nay, absolutely not. Fuck that, Phil. You are a dirty, rotten liar. This is bullshit. You are a liar, and you are a fucking bold-faced, dirty liar. He's lying, he's a faker, he's full of shit, he's a bad person. Every time I say something, it ends up being false. Um, just for being on the internet, keep in mind, you know, it evolved from some place where I was one of the biggest, most popular, most positive YouTubers to people hating on my guts for years. And now he was involved in that, so he was constantly getting wrangled into that shit, right? And yet he didn't deserve that, and I totally agree there. And I think what happened is when I moved, he saw this was an op- I agree with Storm Bernal on that. I've never heard any detractor shit on John, or Howard, or OJ, or any of those guys. I've, I've never heard any of that. It's always been on Phil. So, that kind of takes that initiative away. That, oh, John dropped Dave because he couldn't deal with all of the, the stress that that Dave was providing. That doesn't sound right, and it certainly isn't true. I've never heard a detractor go after after John, specifically. I've never seen that. Not at all. So, it's funny how, yet again, using John as a shield 
using John as a blanket to protect himself and whatnot over something he did. I'll say with friends like that, who needs enemies? Opportunity now where he was going to make a decision. Am I going to focus on my own stuff and just do my own thing and separate myself from that toxicity that sadly has become being associated with Phil? Or am I going to keep doing what we've been doing and kind of put up with it? And I think he realized in his own mind, his personal decision, which I, which I respect, all right, is that to sever the relationship was the best thing to do so that he wouldn't have to be uh, attacked anymore. And he wouldn't have to basically be uh, feeling that toxic shit anymore, okay? And the thing is, I completely and utterly respect that decision. And if John had told me that, I would have been okay with it. But he never did. Instead, he just ignored me. And that's not the way to deal with stuff in life. You know, it's called passive aggressivism is when you don't actively respect someone enough to tell them the truth about a situation and instead you just ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, and then it blows up. And that's literally what happened is for about a year, I was asked. Isn't that what you do with your fan base? When they, ask you, when they ask you about your finances? When they ask you, hey, Phil, how much more money do you owe in back taxes, this, that, and the third? I mean, you respect them enough to ask them for money, don't you? Or maybe you don't respect them. But you ask them for that sweet, sweet cash. And when they have a little bit of questions on, well, okay, Dave, but what's this money going to go to? Uh, how much trouble are you really in? How much do you really need? Oh, well, don't worry about that. Just give me the money. Oh, I don't, I don't feel like giving you, or I don't feel comfortable with giving you that personal information. Just give me the money. So you're okay with asking strangers, or lately your friends, for money, but you won't explain where, what the money's for or where it's going to. Or, well, you'll say where the, where the money's going, but you won't say how much you owe. Because it's obvious that if they're asking you how much they owe, how much you owe, some of them, some of them might actually want to try to, you know, pull their resources together to pull you out of this problem. Which is God bless them for that. God bless them for people who have no real f dog in that fight when it comes to your back taxes. Because you're a dumbass who are willing to, <laughs> excuse me, willing to pull their resources together to try to pull you out. But you don't want to answer some simple questions that they're giving you that are thrown your way because, oh, that's too personal. That's none of your guys' business. But give me money, though. All right, whatever. What's going on? Are you okay? Do you want to, you want to do anything? Do you, you want to go back and do smart guys or whatever? And he would just ignore my messages. Oh, you're going to salt, 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 salt. And that's why. You weren't calling to see how he was doing. You were calling to get him back on that sweet, sweet content so you can get that sweet, sweet money. And did, and... Jesus Christ, Dave, let that man do his own thing. The relationship wasn't severed. He just does what most friends do when and when they go through transitions. He ha He's his own man. He has his own priorities. So let that man get his shit together. Let him do him. Wasn't he working on, um, on, uh, he had that project he was working on for a while. Dave has talked about it, and he was trying to work on that. And then he was still working on the show. And that hard work is what leads, which led the show to be where it's at now. His job isn't to babysit you. His job isn't to coddle you. That's what your fan base is for, man. So you pissed away probably the best friend that you ever had because you couldn't convince him to come to do content with you so you could profit. That's the real truth of DSP and John Rambo and the rest of those guys too. He couldn't profit off of them anymore. So he came up with the narrative that they abandoned me. Even though he took all of that um, that Project 7 merchandise, mainly the shirts, and used, and used those to spin the concept that, oh, I'm going to be redoing Project 7. I'm going to resurrect Project 7 to get a quick cash grab out of it and never had any intention of really doing it. But he needed those shirts, though, because the shirts pushed the narrative. And did you ever compensate John and Howard for the money that they put in on that? What was it? About $900 altogether. So each one of you put in three. Did you ever compensate John and Howard for the money they put in on those shirts? No, nah, you didn't. You kept all of it to yourself. So who's really at fault there, Dave? Fuck out of here. <laughs> I'll get my mouth overpowered with salt flavor. Basically, here's a whiny baby. I'm not a whiny baby. I'm a mature adult. And I'm not a children's entertainer. Or he would respond later and just say, give me a BS answer like, oh, I'm still too busy. We'll do, maybe do it later. Instead of just being honest with me, you know? And now here we are, what, three years later? 
Do you really think three years later I have any desire to reach out to someone who obviously did not respect me enough to be honest with me back then, literally made stuff up about me on the internet in a video, and now still in, you know, how many years has not reached out to me? Why would I care? <clears throat> and that's it. The past is the past. And I don't care about that stuff anymore, which is why I don't bring it up. You know? It's time to move on, guys. It really is. It's time to move on and stop acting like things that happened in the past are going to be changed or fixed. The bottom line is, as I've said this before, and I'll bring it up for you guys again. You know, John Rambo was a part of my content from 2010 until uh, mid-2014. So roughly, I would say, you know, three and a half years. I've now lived in Washington State for over four years. I have been doing content solo longer than I did content co-op with John. It's time to, to wake up and move on, guys, and stop dwelling on the past. Seriously. It's time to stop bringing this shit up because it doesn't get anything done. And all it does is it brings up, you know, feelings about, man, it sucks that things fell apart, right? Um, that's life. That's adult. Okay, good. So he at least has some regret for not being a man and calling his friend, his best friend up and being like, hey, man, I'm sorry for being an idiot. But it's not about the content. It's not about him providing content for you, Dave. It's about him being your friend. At the end of the day, he was your friend longer than you were making content. Not just with him, but solo. That's the point that your fan base is trying to put upon you. That he was your friend longer than you profiting off of him. Because you guys weren't partners in that. That's what that's the narrative that they're trying to push. Reach out to your friend. Not your prompt. Not the asset. Not the accessory to your content. But see, even now, Dave's just thinking about, oh, well, think about everything we could have done together, you know, from a business standpoint. And he doesn't even look at him as a friend anymore. If he ever really did. When he couldn't use him. TSP News. Life, you gotta realize that sometimes this shit happens and it's not necessarily anyone's fault. Shit happens. That's your fault. I, I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. It is YouTube's fault. And you just move on from it. And I'm not gonna dwell on that shit anymore. Okay? Jay Kramer says... You know, Phil, it's, it's, it's always been your word against John's word, and unless there's physical proof of anything, it's bullshit from both of you. And you know what, Jay Kramer? You're right. You are absolutely 100% correct. What I say is just my what I'm saying from my perspective, and what John has said is from his perspective, right? And it could be complete bullshit on both sides. It could be that one of us is telling the truth. It could be that we're each telling half-truths. And there's no way that any of you guys on the internet would ever know. I'm, I'm hypocritical. So that's why I don't know why people keep bringing it up. <laughs> Quite frankly, like I said, three years, I'm tired of talking about it. Like I said, it's time for us to all just move on. And realize that the, what it is is what it is. And stop dwelling on this past. Again, I've been doing solo content in Washington State longer than I ever did co-op with John. Yet people still bring it up like it's something that happened yesterday. It's time to grow up and move on and say things have changed. It's time to grow up and move on. But I can't admit to my friend that I, that I was wrong. It's not about content. But we're not going to dwell on that. We're not going to dwell on that. Because that's just, that's just kind of silly at this point. But... Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is Cat's future. This is what Cat has to look forward to. You know what I mean? She will be draw when her usefulness is is done. What? Excuse me. When he's exploited her for everything that she's worth, he will drop her just like he dropped John and Howard, just like how, well, he got dropped by Panda, but she'll get exploited the same way Panda did. Whatever information that Phil has on her will be exploited for him at the end of the day. He exploited John and Howard by trying to do Project 7 um, reboot. He screwed over Panda with the whole emergency, or not emergency, yeah, they had emergency stream nonsense. And then Cat's next. The moment she outlives her usefulness, this is what's up, this is, this is what's in store. And then look at Brightside Viking. Look at some of these other guys who have been whales to him and helped him out at one time or another. And look how they got cast aside. How they got cut off at the knees. This is what this man does. So, Phil wants to push the narrative that everybody hates me because I'm bad at games. No, everybody hates you because you're a shitty individual. You're a shitty human being. That's why you have detractors. That's why you have haters. That's why you have trolls. And stop bringing it up, okay? Pro Prime says, take a note from avoiding the puddle, just commentate. 
Well, com commentating, don't you still have to go to tournaments? <laughs> like, first of all, if I were a commentator at fighting games, I would only be able to do old school games, which would be fine, but people would probably be shitting all over me constantly. And I don't know if that's the kind of attention they want. Maybe it is. Maybe they want that attention at their events or whatever. But wouldn't I still have to go to the event? That's the problem. It's the constant pay pain of paying and traveling constantly that's not worth it. So. Pro Prime says you are guaranteed money when commentating. Are you serious? People actually get paid to commentate? Now, wait a minute. People are getting paid to do commentary on fighting game streams? Now, wait a second, ladies and gentlemen. Early on, he said he, he had his... Ladies and... Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. He was the one who was just saying that, oh, I keep an eye on the fighting game community and he, all these guys do kiss each other's butts and kiss games, the kiss the, the butts of fighting games and this, that, and the third, and they don't do anything else. So if that was the case, then how does he not know how commentating works over there? How does he not know how the general tournament structure is laid out? People have their, people have their complaints about commentating and about tournament organizers too. Just saying. You see that a lot on Twitter. And that's where Phil gets the majority of his news from. So, how did he not know about that? And it's funny how his interest is now being peaked because he's getting paid for it. I wonder if he knew that some of those commentators get paid to get flown out, how would he feel about that too? Well, let's find out. Boy, has shit changed. Holy fucking shit. People get paid to do commentary. I, I mean, now you've got me speechless. You actually just blew my fucking mind. People are getting paid for that shit? What the fuck? <laughs> God damn it. I really played at the wrong time. I seriously played at the wrong time. You know how much money I would have fucking made? Fuck you, you fucking greedy piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. Now, like I said, this goes back to that whole machinima thing. That they, uh, this machinima opportunity opportunity that they posed to him years ago when Street Fighter 4 came out and he could have he could have made quite a bit of money now granted yes he was going to be hated on but even Jerry the King Lawler um has fans you know what I'm saying that you 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 need a villain basically like for example if low tier god ever decided to do commentary and whatnot people people are going to like him people are going to hate him but even with the hate he can profit off of it you know what I'm saying? Because everybody's going to be like, yeah, let's see what Low Tier God has to say. I'm ready to shit on him. You know what I mean? Especially when you do play-by-play. -play. I use Jerry the King Lawler because I consider him one of the like one of the best like color commentators as it pertains to WWE. He was someone who shitted on certain wrestlers. He was someone who hyped up other wrestlers. He was someone who swore that he was the greatest at everything. And yet, he was engaging. He was definitely creative. And he sold you. He made you believe what he said. Even if you hate, whether you liked him or hate him, he still made you believe it. Or if not, he made you hate it enough that where you wanted to cheer for the the underdog or for the other person or whatever the case may be. And that's what I feel wrestling is missing now. Is it's not just what's going on in the ring. Because if you can read the ring, then you can understand the story that's being told in the ring. But the commentators bring it together. And that's why it's a shame that you don't have a Jim Ross out there no more. And so on and so forth. And whatnot. That's why I think that, um, I think that's why they're considered. Uh, Jerry Lawler, what was it? It was Jerry Lawler, Jim Cornette, and, uh, da -da -da, and, and Jim Ross are considered like the, like the best three-man team in wrestling. If you want to say just the best two-man team, it was definitely by far uh, Jim Ross and Jerry King Lawler. And whatnot. Most people like to put early Vince McMahon up there with Jerry Lawler. It was okay, but, you know, whatever. So, then again, like I said, it tells a story. But the thing is, is can you really trust Phil to do that? And that's why Phil needs two or three other people to kind of sell the story from a commentator standpoint. And then all he has to do is shit on the rest. It's a pretty easy job. Jerry, Jerry Lawler has said that a lot. That, you know, Jim Ross and, and, um, and Jim Cornette you know, they just set him up and he knocks them down. It was really easy. Especially if you're a good talker. But, you know, Dave's not really good at much of anything, really. Yes, penis. I'd, I'd be good at commentary. I know I would be good at commentary. What? 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 
I know I, you know, I could do play-by-play, -play, but I also could get hype over matches and stuff. And by the way, these days I'm much better at controlling myself and my emotions, as you notice. I don't... I, yes, if there's a rage-filled moment, I'll go crazy. But every five seconds, I'm not going to start swearing up a storm and everything. I know a lot of these streams are becoming more PG and everything. Uh, I would be a good commentator. But, sadly, when I'm not... Actually, let me cut in. I don't think so. I agree with, uh, with Storm Pernell. Because, as you know, commentators also have the live stream... Like, the, the chat for the live streams in front of them. Excuse me. And he's not gonna be able to handle that. I think he, I think he'd have a hard time seeing all these people talking shit about him, and he wouldn't be able to do anything about it because he can't. They don't ban comments on fighting game streams unless you say something really out the motherfucking box. Outside of that, though, you know, what's fair is fair. So I think Phil would have a hard time with that. So if he gets real quiet all of a sudden, you would know why, and it would be hard for him to cover that up. So. And that, and if he would be so good at commentating, why is his streams garbage? You know what I'm saying? Why is his stream so terrible? Oh, because he would be getting paid doing commentating where he can talk shit legally. Well, not legally, but he can talk shit and not really have no, you know, not really have any repercussions. Even though, you know, some commentators have been approached by certain by other people when they've said certain things. And Dave would have to contend with that. Don't be wrong. I, I, from what I've, from what I've heard, it, it's never turned anything violent or whatnot. But you know how Dave is. When someone approaches him in real life, he kind of clams up. So that might be an issue. That might be an issue. Not part of the FGC, really. It's kind of hard to commentate. So I guess it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> okay then. Holy crap! Some people are just have this crazy like. They live in this weird fantasy world. I guess is the best way to describe it. So I said, I like penis because it's easy to eat. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. <laughs> easy. All right, guys. So uh, that's the end of that. Uh, the John narrative, you'll always hear that for years to come. It us he usually talks about that between May and July, almost every year. Almost. At least, you know, a couple times a year, he brings up John and Howard and what could have been. But yet, he, he's not man enough to apologize. As for the FGC, <coughs> excuse me, Phil's pull of shit. There are plenty of people who've had complaints before Phil as well as after. And none of them try to take, you know, the credit for the whole thing. It wasn't like Dave was the movement. So, there you go on that. The only movement he makes is in the bathroom. And... As for commentating, he had a shot. He had an opportunity and he missed it, which is typical of Dave. And like I said, that was back in, you know, when Street Fighter 4 first came out. He could he could have made a lot of money doing that. You know what I mean? I mean over time I should say. He could have made a lot of time he could have made a lot of money from doing that. But um then again, there are other things too. You gotta be able to cooperate with other people. You know what I'm saying? You have to learn how to bounce off people properly. These are things that I'm not even sure if he'd really been capable of doing and whatnot. Not without any real, like, training and whatnot. And even back in, in like, you know, when Street Fighter 4 came out, you know, a lot of guys were, a lot of commentators were, were talking to each other. They were, you know, trying to formulate stuff. They do that now. You know what I'm saying? You have to, you know what I mean? Not everybody works well with each other, so that's why a lot of guys get paired off. So it is what it is. And eventually, if Dave, you know, acted any way acts the way he does now, they would have eventually pushed him out if he doesn't conform. And we all know how Phil feels about a uh, change. It's not it's not exactly something he's uh, he's very good at. In any case, ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network and Productions. I am your host slash anchor GTG and I am signing off. It's been, uh, it's, it's good to get back. It's, it's good to be back, I should say. And whatnot. And uh, let me get back to work because there's still a lot to do. <laughs> but I'm your host slash anchor GTG and I'm signing off. Thank you guys for everything. End of broadcast.